Hello, everyone. Just a little reminder, this is track number three, and we are about to hear uh, Chase Granberry. So Chase, turn it over to you. Hi, thanks, and thanks for having me. Uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, distributed rate limiting with um, PubSub and ETS. Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm kind of coming down a little, little <clears throat> cold, so a um, little parched at the moment. But um, anyways, we'll see what it see what happens here. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, previously, I bootstrapped like an analytics. Um, software company for about 10 years. I sold it, uh, but I actually never wrote a line of code. I was kind of like the everything else guy, um, sales, product manager, uh, customer support, um, CEO, and basically everything but code. Um, I managed to kind of do at some point. But then um, I, uh, when I sold the company, I had a bunch of ideas for different things I wanted to do. And I don't know, I just always kind of wanted to figure this stuff out. And I figured um, that now was, was really the perfect time to do that. So I decided to learn uh, Elixir. I chose Elixir because we were kind of moving to Elixir um, at my company previously. So I had a good base of knowledge about it. Um, and, you know, so I, I basically just started prototyping stuff. Um, and the first thing I wanted to build was this, was essentially a SaaS, um, centralized logging service because we uh, we had paid a lot of money monthly to logging and monitoring services. I felt that it should be cheaper um, and a lot better. And that was kind of my goal. And so I launched it after a couple months and I, I actually had a decent amount of people using it and they liked it. So I just kind of stuck with it and I found it to be an inter interesting problem. Um, and I, I've just enjoyed working on it. Anyway, today, we are doing about 500 million. Uh, we're ingesting about 500 million events uh, daily. Uh, we hit about 600,000 requests a minute, um, like many times during the day. Uh, and there's over 2,000 um, sources. The source uh, could be a website or you know your Elixir app or whatever. They're sending us um, data. We we are uh, uh, over, over 2,000 of those are sending us data. Uh, every day. So it's grown quite a bit. Um, it's been in beta, so it's been free, but we're actually, I'm actually launching like the version one today. Um, so if you're looking for a new like SaaS logger thing, um, we have a, a logger backend and, um, and it works pretty well. I've been, we've been using it in production because the whole thing is written in Elixir. We've been using it in production for uh, a long time and I like it quite a bit. Um, and at this point we're basically, um, feature parity with paper trail, but it's the, the interface is much faster. Uh, we ingest stuff much faster. Um, you can send us any JSON and we have, um, gig elixir log drain support and, uh, and, and we have a special like uh, $500 one-time payment for log flare for life. Um, and, uh, and I, I think that gets you a lot. We also have a free plan if you guys want to check it out. Um, so anyways, I am here to talk about rate limiting because I had to build a rate limiter for Logflare. And um, uh, I felt that I, I did it a little bit differently, I guess. Um, you know, typically people reach for Redis and, uh, you know, the, the uh, request comes in and, um, you basically increment that in Redis. And then when a request comes in again, you look at Redis and, um, you know, see where you're at and then rate limit based on that. But we have, uh, you know, the beam and distribution. And so I just felt like it could be a little bit different. Um, I, I, I really didn't want to use, not, not that there's anything wrong with Redis. Redis is a great piece of software, um, but I'm, I'm bootstrapping this. I'm really one, uh, and a half guys, and I, didn't, I just didn't want another thing to manage. Um, and, I, and I felt like we could do it with Elixir. And so I kind of set out to figure out how to do that. And basically what I, what I ended up doing was um, just using PubSub. So, you know, we track the counts of uh, requests for basically like an API key uh, locally 
and and then we pass that data around the cluster with PubSub, and then we cache um, the data from each node locally uh, locally as well. And then um, the request comes in, we just read it. So we don't actually read all the nodes on every request um, because we may not want to do that in certain situations. So we we end up caching everything locally. So anyways, I'm just I'm going to go through that whole process. Um, so we rate limit with plug so we can kind of like catch all our endpoints. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna, this is how we're gonna build it out. So we're gonna rate, rate limit with plug to catch all our endpoints. Uh, we're gonna start and stop processes like dynamically. So each, we're gonna have an, a different process for each uh, essentially session in this demo or API key. Um, and we're gonna increment early encounters and then we're gonna pass messages to processes across the cluster with PubSub. Uh, and, then, uh, and, then we're, and then when our processes get those messages, we're gonna cache like everything locally uh, so that we're only reading data from like local memory. And then, um, and then on top of that, I'm gonna show, I, well, after this, I'm gonna show you a little uh, live view demo. Uh, so, uh, I was debating on whether to do the demo first or last, but I think we'll do it. Um, I think we'll do it first, so we kind of have um, an overview of what's going on. So if you guys want to, you can go to phoenix uh, phx -limit .gigalixerapp .com, uh and play with the demo. And there's also a link to the GitHub repo. So all the code that I'm going to go through after the demo is, um, is on there. So let's... Let's quickly do this uh, demo. So here is uh, Phoenix limit and let's get a new. So on every request, it starts um, a process, basically a rate limiter process. And here we have uh, two nodes in this cluster. And uh, currently for my session, they're not getting any requests. And if we refresh a couple times, we should see some requests come in. Uh, and then there's a simple work command here that I can just run. And so here we're getting eight, uh, 12, 18, 13 requests a second, Etc. The average is um, two now per node, uh, three, three per node. When we get to 10 requests a second on average for this cluster, uh, it's going to be rate limited. So now we're at five and go over. So now we're at 12 and live view just told us that we're rate limited. And let's see if we actually are rate limited. And yes, we are indeed rate limited. Um, now this is only based on the session, so I could just as well open this one uh, and start a new session, and it would it would uh, come up for me. But that that's basically what we're doing, and this is this is what this is actually what we're doing with um, uh, with Logflare as well. And this is exactly how we rate limit, you know, five hundred million. Um, request a day. Uh, so let's kind of start going over the code. The first thing that we want to do, uh, so when we, when the app starts, we're going to start a, a dynamic supervisor and the dynamic supervisor is what all, all our process um, rate limiters are going to live under. Uh, and, and there's actually a really handy um, thing in the dynamic supervisor for the max children. So in this instance, I've set the max children to 10,000. So we can only have um, like 10,000 rate limiters run at any one time. It, it's probably like kind of a lot, um, but that's the, just in general, if you're doing anything inside a process and you're using like a dynamic supervisor, the max children um, number is it, the, the, the option is just a very, very good way to like limit concurrency. And so here, um, and then, and then we have the start, the spec, the start spec. We're going to restart. Uh, we're going to set that as transient because we don't want the dynamic supervisor to like restart these things if they die because um, we actually end up killing them ourselves after a minute. 
uh, because we don't want you know these sessions to live longer than uh, than that. Um, so when the server, so when a request when a request comes in, uh, it actually starts a process, and um, and then the when the spawn session is basically like getting the session ID. And then I'm going to start a local process. And then if my, if my local process starts okay, I'm going to start um, the rest of the processes on all the other nodes uh, via that start multi. And if the local process is already started, we basically assume that some other node already started uh, the whole cluster. And so we'll just kind of like ignore that. Um, and then, but then if I hit max children, which is what the dynamic supervisor gets, if I, uh, reach my concurrency limit, if I get max children, then, uh, I'm going to rate limit on that too. So that keeps, um, people from, uh, starting too many rate limit instances anyway. Uh, so then after, so when the server starts, uh, so when my rate limiter server starts, uh, I am this is what we do when we init the server. Um, we're actually subscribe. So we're using PubSub and we're actually gonna subscribe each. Uh, so each each instance, um, each process is gonna subscribe to essentially our limits, uh, our limits topic. And then we're gonna do an idle shutdown. So the idle shutdown is like um, basically we're only gonna let these processes live for a minute because um, we don't th want them around forever. So after um, our idle shutdown time, they're gonna kill themselves. Uh, and then we're gonna init our counters. And here we have the init counters, uh, which gives us a new Erlang counter. And then we're gonna save the reference to that in, uh, in a persistent term. And then all that stuff. Uh, oh, and then we're gonna initialize, LQ is like a nice library uh, for making um, a queue that is limited in the amount of things that it has in it. So it's basically just a list with um, a limited length. So in this case, there's 60 things allowed in that queue. So each um, individual like rate per second, we're gonna store in that limited length uh, list, then we're gonna average it to get our average. Um, so then, so after we've done that stuff, uh, we're going to set our state and our state is basically going to be like, you know, we have the original session, we have the session ID. Um, the original session is there just because uh, I like passing um, stuff like that around. Uh, we have the, ti the, t the reference for the timer. Uh, I made that a list. We really only have one timer currently, but, um, you know, eventually you could have multiple timers if you wanted. Uh, we have the rate counter reference. And then, uh, and then we have the bucket, which is our 60 list of 60 things. Uh, and then we're going to set the tick and the tick. The, so this process every second is basically going to look at, you know, our current count and then um, do some stuff. And so this is what we do on uh, every second. So on, on every second, we get the state dot counter last. So the counter last was like what we did last second. Uh, and then now we're getting uh, like the current rate is basically um, the uh, like the current counter minus the last second. And then uh, and then we're going to push that into our queue. And then we're going to average it. Um, and then we're going to average it uh, to get our average. And then we're going to broadcast all that data to the cluster. And then and then we're going to set a timer to do all that stuff again. And so this is what this is where all the you know the rate limit data from each node gets passed around um, to the whole cluster. Uh, and then so remember when we 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 described we subscribed we had the process subscribed to our own uh, process we had the process subscribed to our own um, processes like pub sub stuff in the beginning and so this is what we do uh, we did that basically because. Um, the, uh, we're going to cache. So when, when messages come in now from all the processes that are alive on all the different nodes, uh, we get all those because we subscribe to them via pub sub. And, uh, and this is how we catch those messages. And so now we're basically, and, and essentially at this point, now we're just going to cache them locally, but we want to cache them locally. Like I said, so we don't have to go out to 
every single node to um, pull that data down on each request. So this way I'm caching them in, e in ETS and, uh, and that way they'll just, they'll just live in memory. And, and ultimately, so the, the data that uh, we are building up, just a list is, so we have like the node name and then some, some data about the current, um, the current counters that uh, live across our cluster. So on each, for each node, we have like the average uh, rate and then the, um, the rate for the last second. And then the message I'm just using for, uh, for like the live view stuff. And uh, so this data lives on every node now because every process is passing it as like every second is like passing it uh, to every other node. And, uh, and then we, and then, and then we, so when, when, uh, when plug, when the request comes into plug, um, we look at, uh, we accumulate all like the, we basically like accumulate this, um, this list into like the average rate for the cluster. So here we have, um, like the accumulator for the, for the cluster rates. And uh, basically this just adds up all that stuff. And so we check that and then we say is like the, the rate, you know, in um, currently it's 10 within our rate limit. And if it's, uh, if, it's, if it's true, then we increment it and return the con. If it's false, then we rate limit. Uh, and then at the end, we, uh, like I said, we set those counters to like clean up our processes. And uh, so um, when, whenever we increment something, uh, we, we, uh, we get, we, we get the reference from the persistent term and then, and then we increment the counter uh, and then and then, and, then we, and then we tell ourselves to reset the timer. And then the reset of the timer, um, we cancel the current timer. So basically to keep these things alive as requests come in, uh, we cancel the idle shutdown timer that we set previously. And then we set a new um, idle shutdown timer. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for your talk. It was great. Um... All right. See you later. Great. Thanks a lot. Tracks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.